Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Elliot, for asking me to speak about um, my favorite subject ever, the Rules Playhouse. Um, this is going to be a whistle-stop tour. Um, one small disclaimer, I'm in practically every one of my slides. End of disclaimer. Okay. So, um, the Rose Playhouse. So, um, Philip Henzel, who is a dyer by trade, he um, purchased this land, or leased this land, called the, the Little Rose Estate, from St Mildred's Parish, Bread Street in London. And he didn't have any money to build the Rose Playhouse. So he goes into partnership with a grocer called John Chumley. And John Chumley gives Henzo £816 per year and um, so that Henzo can build the rose. And in return, um, Chumley is allowed to have an alehouse on the plot of land and he's allowed to have 50% um, of the box office takings. And we know this because the documentation still survives. So this is the deed of partnership which is kept in the archive department of Dulwich College. So there's our great Edward Elaine, the leading actor of The Rose, and he was Philip Henzo's um, son-in-law. He married uh, Philip Henzo's stepdaughter, uh, Joan Woodward. And of course, uh, that's where the um, archival materials kept today, the Dulwich College. That was Elaine's College of God's Gift. And um, Elaine also gave alms to the poor. Um, and he's buried in the chapel at Dulwich College. He was baptized at St. Botov without Bishopsgate, also where my beloved John Keats was also baptized. And we did the Eve of St. Agnes at the Rose, um, which is one of my favorite places. And John Keats lived just around the corner from the Rose when he was studying to be a doctor at Guy's Hospital. Um, and also, uh, John Keats wrote this beautiful epitaph, and we've got water that protects the archaeological side of the Rose, so I wrote John Keats's epitaph overlooking the water of the rose. Um, so these are come a, a couple of the wonderful finds. So this is an oak baluster that was discovered at the rose. The rose was made um, out of oak and it had a thatched roof. Um, this is just another uh, close-up of that. And the beautiful um, posy rings, um, which has a, a lovely phrase on it, think of me, God willing. And we sell those at the rose for 20 pounds if you're interested in buying one. And we also use that phrase when I played um, Joan of Arc, we spray painted that onto Joan's t-shirt to kind of bring the past and the present alive. All of this material about the posy rings can be found in Henslow's diary, which also still um, survives, and a list of um, all sorts of things like cloaks of velvet and black silk stockings. Um, now we know that the carpenter for the rose is called John Griggs, he was actually a friend of Philip Henslow's, and uh, it was a 14-sided polygon about 22 meters in diameter, so it was um, not that big to be honest. Now, the first um, recordings of the rose, how we know it was up and running by 1587, is that we've got um, a complaint from the Privy Council about Sunday performances, and also Henslow is fined 10 pounds because he doesn't clean the little um, ditches that bordered the Little Rose estate. He refused to pay that fine, by the way, and then eventually was thrown out of court. This is the diary, look at that, how exciting. So that's what's at Dulwich College, and you can touch those pages. So in 1592, he starts the diary, and that's the year in which he makes these renovations to the Rose, he makes it bigger. There's a roof over the stage, a trap door, and he spends a lot of money on paint and building materials as well. Everything is digitized, so you can go online and see all this for yourself, so that's really exciting. There's Edward Elaine there. And there's Julian Bauscher standing on the archaeological site, um, so you can see that we've got water which um, uh, uh, covers the rose, it's under sand and concrete as well, but I will let Julian Bauscher explain that himself, so I'm not sure how to start I this. I was the archaeologist <laughs> directing the excavations of the site in where are we? 1988-89. What do all these red lights represent? They represent the layout of the rows. We're right in the middle, we're in the yard, uh, surrounded by the gallery. It's this double line around the entire building. Three stories high, with people sitting down, watching the play. That's the outer wall out there. That's the first bit we found in very early 1989. Um, that's when we knew we had it, which is great. And it's all focused on this direction, which is the business end. This is the stage. Well, we're standing, we're jostling, we're, we're um, a, a large crowd here in the yard. We're the groundlings. We push up to the stage. It's also like, it's almost Tudor moshing. <laughs> and as you can see, we actually perform down on site. There's a, a bit of Ophelia there going a little bit mad. Um, a close-up of some of the finds again. There's the shoe Julian was talking about, the, the beads. Um, and then we've got the cannonball as well, um, which again, Julian will explain. By people. And in a theatre, 
That's a very exciting collection of people. You've even got the shoes that they wore. The man or woman had a bunion on his big toe and he just sliced around it so he didn't hurt. Teeny weeny glass beads sewn onto costumes. A standard Tudor cannonball. You roll along to create a thunder effect. Um, so there we go, some of the plays that were um, performed at the Rose, the original Rose, Hamlet, and the King Lear. Now this is before um, the Hamlet that we know and the King Lear that we know um, were written. So both Hamlet and King Lear were around 1603. Um, so we do a lot of plays at the Rose. Sometimes we do plays that were for performed originally at the Rose, like the Jew of Malta. There is Henry VI, part one, which we also performed at the Rose. Isle of Dogs, not Elliot's Isle of Dogs, but this play nearly closed the Rose because when um, it was written, it was thought to be seditious, and um, as a result, so the Rose was nearly closed because of that. Um, so, the fight to save the Rose, here we go. And when we last left the Rose, the archaeology was under threat from demolition to make way for a new office block in 1989. Luckily, a team of bona fide heroes banded together to save the Rose. They wanted to draw attention to the site with many uh, actors from at home and, and abroad. I remember Dustin Hoffman was there, I really was, uh, and many others, but uh, Vanessa Redgrave was, was uh, one of the leading organizers. And there was a, there was a big concert, the climax of, climax of which was a recording organized by his son, Richard, of Laurence Olivier, who was ailing and at home and not able to attend. Can a muse of fire exist? under the ceiling of commerce. Please, help us stop the second Elizabethan age from destroying the glories of the first. Cry, God for Harry, England and the Rose. <laughs> yes, it was a dark and stormy night, as they say. And a lady came along the ranks of the protesters with a tea trolley and handed out sticky buns and tea. And this lady was Rosemary Harris, Aunt May in Spider-Man, classically trained actress with a wealth of experience looking after the protesters. And, you know, that's, uh, for me, that's something that I will never forget. The big day came, I suppose, when... Uh... The bulldozers were due in to put in the basement of the new building, which has now been built. Dame Peggy Ashcroft and Dame Judy Dench occupied the site in their deck chairs uh, with others of us. At the end of the day, Mrs. Thatcher's government had not only backed down, but uh, gave uh, a million pounds of government resources to continue the, the dig. Okay, so there's some um, highlights from the, the, the talk from Ian McCallan about some, there's Jane Siddell monitoring the Rose. She looks after that. Um, and then we've got celebrities at the Rose, the late Susanna York, the late Alan Rickman. Um, there we were at the British Museum when we were awarded the first uh, round of HLF grant. There's David Suchet, we're talking about the Rose. Mark Rylands, there's Tony Robinson, um, F. Murray Abraham and John McHenry who played uh, Mercutio. TDP at the Rose, our VIPs. We've got, um, look at that Colin run through. Um, we've had a Brazilian footballer, Michael Wood. We've had Mark Wanamaker, Sam Wanamaker's son, uh, uh, sorry, nephew, and Paul Bonnet at the Rose. The company of Waterman and Leiterman and the Worshipful Company of Cordwainers. There they are at the Waterman seat. Um, and then we've got a little bit of Rose outreach in Avebury, um, in the Romans. Uh, and then we've got a Rose outreach on the Golden Hind. We've got the Elaine's um, dancers and uh, some nice reviews. We've gone royal, we've promoted the Rose in Canada House, we've had a little bit of girl-on-girl uh, -girl action there in Twelfth Night, and then um, we've also had Rose Youth, so young Misha there was my first Orlando, we had a little bit of red carpet celebration at the Noel Coward Theatre, education at the Rose, universities come in and they do their projects about the Playhouse, so we have a lot of student groups, and visitors from all over the Rose coming to see what we do. And now we've got performances like Hamlet, and we've also got um, plays written uh, by um, uh, uh, like Goethe, and it was uh, translated by Roy Pascal, and that was his daughter coming to see our play. 
That's how we use the site. So down on site, we've got the Temple of Diana. Um, then we've got Ben Hale as Orestes. We've got really great reviews. Um, we also, again, use a lot of um, candles down on site. You can see it's quite an intimate space and you do get the drama of what we do at the Rose. This is a whiz bang through what the sort of things we do. We did um, a couchant with Margaret Thatcher and it was so powerful. We had a really good time with that. Um, so I could explain the tiger, but there's no time. Um, so uh, we got also really good write-up in the Chile newspaper. Um, there we go, measure for measure. And this is the army of France, um, and they're hurling insults across the water at the Rose. And then I'm proud to say that the acting bug has been caught by members of the TDP. Here's Natalie Cohen in her one-woman show, The Sound of Fish Traps, Not Pawn Traps. <laughs> We've got the Anglo-Saxon divas. We've got <laughs> Josh Frost. <laughs> And then, of course, we've got Elliot, and that's the after show party. We've got more foreshore antics. There we go, no, more of a, an after show party. And then we look at this fun hot day with Gustav Mill, getting into the spirit of what we do at the Rose. We do dressing at the Rose, Elizabethan dress. Um, we do Canadian Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, <laughs> and Valentine's Day. This was a year we all had our hearts broken. Um, so basically, we do it all. We've made a film about the rose that you just saw. It premiered at Canada House. We had a lot of fun with that. Um, charities, we've helped NAPAC, the Catholic Children's Society that aids um, impoverished families of all faiths. Place to Be, which deals with mental health issues of children. And of course, NAPAC, the National Association for People Abused in Childhood. We also have great volunteers. We couldn't run the rose without our volunteers. That's it. <laughs>